In this question, we have two metal objects. One of the objects has a net charge of 70 picocoulombs. The other object has a net charge of negative 70 picocoulombs. And because of this charge separation, we're going to get a potential difference between the two objects. We call that potential difference V, which is given in the problem as 20 volts. What we need to do in part A is to calculate the capacitance of the system. So we need a relationship between charge capacitance and potential difference, which is given by this lovely equation here. Now we have the known values. We know that the charge on one of the two objects is 70 picocoulombs. We might want to multiply that by 10 to the negative 12 in order to convert that into the standard unit of coulombs. And then again, the potential difference between the objects is given as 20 volts. So to solve for capacitance, we would go into this equation and we would divide both sides by the potential difference to cancel it out on the right hand side. And then we can scoot down the page here and plug in the given charge and potential difference. And when we simplify this, we get 3.5 times 10 to the power of negative 12. And the standard unit here for capacitance is going to be in farads. If your homework system requests micro farads, excuse me, pico farads, then we can set up the following conversion. We have one picofarad is 10 to the minus 12 farads. We look carefully, the 10 to the minus 12 farads would cancel out, and we would be left with 3.5 picofarads. So this would be the correct answer in picofarads, and then we have the equivalent answer in farads. So those are the answers, or the answer, to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked if the charges are changed to 200 picocoulombs and negative 200 picocoulombs, what does the capacitance become? Well, the capacitance is an inherent property of the metal objects. So it actually doesn't matter if we increase the amount of charge on them, the capacitance is going to remain the same. So it's a bit of a trick question, but that's okay. That means it's easy. The capacitance for part B is still 3.5 picofarads because again, it's an inherent property of those metal objects. The only way to change the capacitance might be to insert some material between them or maybe change the distance between them, but we're doing neither of those things in part B. We're simply increasing the charge, does not affect the capacitance. So the answer to B is the same as the answer to A. And then in part C of the question, we want to know the potential difference once we've increased the charge to 200 picofarads. So let's write down, or 200 picocoulombs, excuse me. Let's write down the known values here. And we return to this equation that relates these three quantities together. We're trying to solve for the potential difference. So this time we'll divide by capacitance. So we get charge over capacitance is equal to potential difference. We can plug in the known values. We've left them in terms of pico. So pico coulombs and pico farads. That's great because then we still end up with the standard unit of volts here, which is around 57 volts. So that would be the new potential difference between those two metal objects once we've increased the charge.